So I'm here with Brent Cook uh, with Exploration Insights at the PDAC 2014 March. Uh, it's the third now, I guess it's the Monday, and it's getting very, very busy today. Yesterday uh, it was still bustling, but today it's just uh, it's been very, very busy, wouldn't you say? Yeah, it definitely picked up today from yesterday. Mm -hmm. And uh, you've been exploration analyst with 30 years of experience. You know, you've worked with uh, uh, several groups. You know, namely being Rick Rule and several you know major mining companies. So you have that very strong geological background. The topic I wanted to talk to you about was high grading. And uh, you've mentioned in your talks before. What is high grading, and why is it important? High grading is the, the a mining method whereby you go into a, a deposit and pull out the, the highest grade, the most profitable ore. Uh, and a lot of times what that means is you're actually gutting the deposit. And I went through a demonstration on my presentation yesterday and on my website as well where when you pull out the guts of a deposit, the higher grade material, often the remaining material becomes uneconomic, becomes right. waste. So although a deposit that say has four million ounces of two grams, if you high grade it, you may end up losing one million ounces that was previously part of your reserves right. and is no longer economic. So that's, that's the net effect. Right. And you know, I guess a perfect example of that was when the majors came out with all the results. I mean, you're seeing uh, companies like Gold Corp who have actually reduced the amount of their, their mineable reserves um, uh, in terms of recalculating their reserves based on the gold price or, or over the last uh, few quarters. Uh, can you just give an example of some of the majors that are... That are well, that, that's, that's sort of a different thing is what you're talking about. Right. There. What they've done is lowered the price tick on which they determine their reserves. Right. And, and that doing so dropped a lot of what used to be ore into the non-ore or waste category. Right. That's a, uh, you know, that's a paper or Excel spreadsheet. Exactly. Um, method of doing it. Mm -hmm. But when you physically high grade a deposit, that's that's way different in that you actually, like I said, pull the guts out of it and what's left is not economic. Whereas in a spreadsheet, you can just up the gold price and all of a sudden all becomes economic again. Of course. It hasn't been moved yet. Right. And, and you know, all the majors come up with the, uh, the results and I'll run down some of the some of the stats. You saw Gold Corp reduced their mineable reserves by 15%, Barrick by 26%, Kenros by 30%, Agnico Eco by 700,000 ounces uh, and Newcrest by 11%. Do you think this will continue based, you know, because it looks like they've, you know, they've reduced their um, their target price of gold in terms of recalculating the reserves now, I think for the last couple of years. And uh, the only company I know of is, is Rangel that has basically kept their uh, target price at $1,000. That's uh, on, on an annual basis. So do you think we'll see that going forward? Well, I think, you know, Rangel has good enough deposits that they can do that. The other right. ones, on the whole, don't. I don't think uh, Gold Corp lost half their resources, but they did lose uh, some material, certainly at Pinasquitos. Um, I don't suspect, I mean, it really depends on what the gold price does this year, if they right. up it, keep it flat or drop it again. Mm -hmm. But certainly by using this lower gold price to, to calculate their reserves, it also has a huge impact on what they're going to look at in terms of acquisitions. Right. So how does how, how does the junior sector go forward with this? You know, you're seeing them, uh, you know, sometimes at the at, at one point reduce their outlook. I mean, how does that affect the juniors at the end of the day in terms of new discoveries and bring outs to the to the ground there? I think ultimately it just comes down to the same as always: is you know who's going to make a discovery that's of any value. And mm -hmm. uh, with less money coming into the sector, there's less money going into the ground fewer discoveries because of that, plus it's getting so much harder to find new discoveries given we're mostly looking undercover, blind, uh, you know, it's just getting harder and harder to find discoveries. How the junior sector survives this depends on how uh, frothy the market gets. Right, exactly. I mean, it's it's been very tough over the last couple of years. I mean, how about, but how about new, maybe extractive technologies that can make it more efficient uh, or even lower cost to to look for these new new, uh, new mineral discoveries. Would that I, help the majors or, or the juniors? Well, you, the better and cheaper ways of extracting the ore would certainly help a lot. Right. Um, and they're always working on it. There's tweaks that help here and there and there. But on the whole, I don't see any new technology that's going to make it that more efficient to find new deposits. And right. In fact, fact remains, we're looking blind into very complex geologic systems and all we're doing with all our techniques, geophysical, 
is measuring differences between rock types. Right. We're not measuring ore. Right, right. And it, it's, it's interesting you bring that up because the only thing that I'm aware of in terms of extractive technologies was something by Anglo Gold Ashanti back in August of last year. And they've come up with this new underground mining method. They haven't really disclosed too much of it. They're being kind of, kind of secret about it. Uh, but apparently you can mine uh, gold straight out on underground without any seismic activity, no drilling, no blasting whatsoever. We only got a glimpse, I've only seen a glimpse of it only in uh, about, a, about a month ago where they had a, actually a call about it and a presentation. And uh, that's one thing I've seen around. Have you, have you seen anything else that would... No, I, I've seen about the same thing and I, I think you got to bear in mind that what that probably is designed for specifically is for the very deep, uh, high-grade mines in, in South Africa. That's what, it's not going to... It's not going to go anywhere else. And I, Correct. I don't think it's that big of a deal. I mean, it may okay. help them some, but I, I won't consider that a game changer at all. Oh, interesting. Okay. And um, I guess uh, going forward, I mean, just, just circling back on the funding and, 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 and the juniors, do you think there are other sources of funding, such as, you know, you're seeing a lot of Asian-based companies that are either selling up, setting up satellite offices or they're looking at specific projects? Have you seen that kind of uh, trickling? To some degree, to some degree, you're certainly getting a number of um, private equity groups looking in this sector. I think what people have to bear in mind is these private equity groups, by and large, are looking for very high returns on investments, and typically we don't get that in this sector right. unless there's a, a, a discovery made, and picking that one discovery uh, is a very tough job. Right, right. <laughs> so what's your outlook on, on the sector overall? Um, going forward, we're you know the GDXJ is up 40 percent. Um, that's pretty good over such a short period of time. It would make sense to me to cool off, uh, flatline for a while, maybe retrace a bit. Um, but you know fundamentally, you know the sectors, you know, we're up 40 percent. The XAU is up 25 percent. But really, what's changed is not very much. It's just as hard to find deposits, and your production costs are still on the whole above the current gold price right and bringing those costs down is going to mean uh, they're going to cut the research and development and right. exploration mm -hmm. and it, it's it's an interesting juncture we're coming to where right. we're just not finding enough new deposits to replace what's being mined certainly in the gold space are there any certain areas where uh, or surging, uh, certain emerging belts where companies are going to define these new deposits, whether it be copper or gold, anything that you that is off the top of your head? Nothing new. Nothing new at all. I mean, we're all looking in the same belts, the same rocks, same geology. Mm. If if a country like Iran or Uzbekistan was to open up, right, there would be a big rush into that. So as you were saying, yeah, the, there's not as many emerging uh, districts or, or, or belts that you have recognized that, you know, the same rock, same same areas, uh, except for the fact of what you said, these countries opening up their borders, such as uh, uh, Iraq or Kazakhstan. I mean, uh, and those if they if they yeah. were to, but if I don't I to. don't see that yeah. happening. I mean, basically, we're still stuck with the Tethian belt, the Greenstone belts, um, in the Archean, uh, the Andes, the you know, just the Ring of Fire. Right. You know, we're looking the same place all the time, just looking right. harder and deeper. Okay. Well, uh, you know, thank you so much for your feedback here and for doing this interview with me, Brent Cook. Uh, if you do want to get some more uh, questions uh, forwarded to Brent, you can contact him at uh, explorationinsights.com. Uh, and is there anywhere, that, any, any other sites or any other way? No, I would, I would suggest anyone listening to this go to explorationinsights.com. Um, there's a number of free articles on there that discuss rules of thumbs, uh, tips and tricks for investing in this sector, that sort of thing. Okay, perfect. Well, thanks a lot, Brent, and good luck with the show, and uh, I look forward to talking to you next time. All right, thanks. Perfect.